Hi, Farouk here, your tutor and instructor at directtop.net. So before we dive right into this practice question, I just want to give you a few quick reminders about your FE exam prep. So how you prepare today or in the coming three months, six months, is the key determining factor as to whether you're ready by your FE exam day. And this entails a few things. So let's see, the first thing is just taking that leap forward and just getting started. Watch a few videos read in the handbook, read about the handbook topics, just dive right into it, get started. Don't overthink it. Don't let your thoughts build that obstacle. Just tear that down, push forward and take that small step forward. Take it forward and just get started because you're gonna eventually build that consistency. You're gonna slowly get used to studying, which is hard if you've been out of school for so long or if you work full time, but you will adapt to that. You will adapt to that and you will get used to studying day in, day out. And the goal is to build consistency where let's say you're doing, starting with, let's say even 30 minutes a day, that's fine. Then you'll probably increase it to one hour. That's excellent. So know your limits, how you structure your learning and how you set up your study schedule is in your control. Make sure to communicate with the family how important this goal is. Communicate with your boss, your manager, or whomever about this very important goal of passing the FE exam and becoming an EIT. Then when we take these small steps forward as we're building the right study schedule, structure, and adapting that with our overall life, making sure we're getting a lot of breaks in the meantime, Make sure you're not using resources that are outdated. You're not using old resources with old FE questions or using the old PDF, old specifications. Make sure you're using 2022 relevant FE resources. And we know this is exactly what I offer in my course. So relevant FE resources updated each day with relevant FE type practice questions. Most importantly, resources that are teaching you concepts because we know the FE exam is changing nowadays. They're testing the concepts and the practice questions, the equations. So we have to develop and learn the big picture. This will help us answer these conceptual questions. We're not gonna be perfect, but we should answer the majority of them. Just make sure these are the hard, hard questions, conceptuals, but we will answer those. And also make sure we're solid with the calculation-based questions because they're testing both nowadays. And lastly, you wanna directionalize your learning. What does that mean? So you don't wanna be all over the place, right? You wanna stick to a few resources. You don't wanna use this resource, then dive to this resource, this one, that will likely just overwhelm you. I feel like it overwhelms a lot of my students and that's why they choose to stick to the course, so they stick to the course, they're not using outside resources, and it just structures their learning or directionalizes their learning. Where? They rest after work, recharge, eat with the family, and then they commit, let's say, to one hour each day, just going one topic at a time, one practice question at a time inside the course. So make sure you're not using like too many resources. In fact, the less the better. Make sure you're choosing quality resources, a quality course that's helping you stay on track, stay motivated, and helping you learn the right material. Now, do this one with me. So we're told here, a reservoir has the following inflows and outflows for the first three months of the year. Assume there are 30 days in one month and the reservoir is initially empty. The storage in million cubic feet, million cubic feet in storage at the end of March is most nearly how much? So we want to find the storage at the end of March due to these inflow and outflow that are given. So let me denote that on the side. This is what we want to find. Find. And for storage, I'll just denote it as S. So I'll just write it S. And we know we want the S at the end of March. I'll call it S March. And the units, be careful with the units here, it's million cubic feet. Sometimes it may be acre foot or maybe gallons sometimes, but this one wants it in million cubic feet. So what we're going to do is just get the cubic feet value divided by a million to get it in million cubic feet. So how I'll show that is M per million and I'll just denote cubic feet next to it. 
equal to the power of 3 means cubic feet. So that's what we want to find and we're given this data and based on what we're given, let me just write that we want to assume that the one month is 30 days. So we will say one month will equal to 30 days. And for that, we know also we're given the inflows and outflows for each month. So how do we do this? How would we solve this question? So for the solution, what I'm going to present first, we've talked about this in the past and I'll put that below in a link about the change in storage. So we know the change in storage, we can get that value if we take the inflow minus the outflow. So let's quickly draw a picture. We have, let's say a reservoir and let's say we have the top water surface here. And we know, let me denote the change in storage as Delta S. And this change in storage, let's say for a certain time period, you can imagine this like a sink. So let's say you go to your restroom or kitchen sink, you open the faucet and let's say you open it for one minute and you have an inflow. So you're, you're introducing an inflow there. And let's say you put that in when you open the faucet, that's the inflow. Then at the same time, there's going to be an outflow and that depends on the configuration. We can call it an orifice at the bottom of the sink of that pipe or orifice that will have an outflow. So water is going to come out at a certain rate as well. And if it's clogged, it's going to come out at a smaller rate than the one we put in the inflow. So that you can think of it as the outflow. So we can say that would be the outflow. And let's say for this time period of one minute, so it's a change in time of one minute, we know we can quantify that storage, the storage at the end of one minute. And we know if there's more inflow than outflow, we're going to have an increase in storage. But if the inflow equals to the outflow, we call that like equilibrium or steady state. Just remember steady state inflow equals outflow. Basically the change in storage does not change. So if the sink is empty and the inflow equals to the outflow, we have no storage. There's not going to be a accumulation of water, so no storage. So we can think of it in this manner when we're looking, let's say, at a reservoir in this case. So inflow minus outflow equals to the change in storage. So let me denote that change in storage is always the inflow minus the outflow. And based on this very basic idea, we're going to solve this question. And we're going to do this for each month. So for the solution, this is what I'm going to propose. I'm going to propose a general equation that you can apply. And this equation will help you solve a lot of these. So this is what you would use. And I want to break it down completely. And this is kind of the long method. But if you use this, we know we can also apply this to routing. So reservoir routing or flood routing or even detention pond routing. It's the same general idea. So now what we will say is the storage at any time T, in this case, the time is like month at any time T into the future is going to equal to the storage in the past. So the storage before where we started. So let's say we started in January. What was the storage before? Is it empty? Maybe we had storage, let's say leftover at the end of December. So we have to always put that. We have to start with that. We have to start with the beginning storage. So how I can denote that the storage in any time, let's say the storage in January is going to be the storage in the past, which we will call T minus one. This is the storage in the past. And you can, you can think of that as January minus one, which is like December, the storage at the end of December. It's going to start with that. Then we do plus the change in storage and this change in storage will depend on the inflow minus the outflow. So it's going to be plus the inflow in minus out. And this in minus out is going to be for the current time period, which is, let's say the current month of January. So I'll just put it as T and note. Now I want you to be careful with the units storage. Let's see. This is usually in cubic feet or maybe it might be acre feet or gallons. So volume units are the storage. So we know for this, it's going to be cubic feet. Now, when we look at inflow and outflow, what's the units, especially in this case, 
it's going to be CFS. CFS means what? Cubic feet per second. CFS cubic feet per second. So we know in this case, these units don't match. So we know when we add stuff, they have to match. The units have to match. So this is what? This is cubic feet per second. This in minus out when we get that. So how can we convert that cubic feet per second to a volume? So we know the volume will be Q times T. It's the flow rate times the time. And let me write that on the side. The volume, we take Q times T. And you can think of Q as cubic feet per second, which is CFS times the time. Let's say the time is seconds. When we do that, the time units cancel and we get volume, cubic feet. So we have to do something to this. We have to change it. And how we do that is multiply it by the change in time, the time period. So what I'm going to do is put that in the equation, delta T. So I take N minus out times delta T, and this whole thing converts it to units of what? Of volume, cubic feet, when we do that. So that's going to be cubic feet plus cubic feet. We get the storage in cubic feet. And this is the basic fundamental equation that we're going to apply for each month. So let's do this. So let's do the first month. Let's do it for January. So we're going to start with January. We're going to say the storage in January is going to equal to the storage in January minus one. So let me denote that for the first calculation to break this down. Then we do the N minus out minus out for January. This has to be for January. Then we multiply by the change in time. So I'll go into that as we continue. And we do that once again to get in cubic feet. We're converting the CFS to cubic feet in that step. So now the storage in January, let's plug in numbers, is going to equal to the January minus one. What is that? So think about this. We start in January. What's before January? December. But look at the problem statement. Read this slowly. It says here, 30 days in one month, and the reservoir is initially empty. So we're assuming the reservoir is empty as soon as we begin that inflow in January. So it's going to be empty at the end of the year for the previous year. So we will say it's going to start empty. So before January, it's going to start at zero. So the storage, all we have to do is put zero for that, zero cubic feet. But sometimes the problem statement tells you the storage at the beginning, maybe it's 200 cubic feet, 500 cubic feet. So just be careful. In this case, it says initially empty. So we start with zero. So what we will do is say, okay, this is zero cubic feet. Then we do plus the inflow for what month? January. So I just go above and put that. So it's going to be 500. So we do 500 CFS for cubic feet. And then minus the outflow. So the outflow for that is going to be 250. So let's just put that 250 for that one. 250 CFS. Then we take this and multiply it by the change in time. Note, why are we doing this? Because this, this calculation here gives us cubic feet per second. But I just want it in cubic feet in storage volume units. So we multiply by the change in time. And if we look in our case, what's the time period? For January, it's an entire month. So it's one month. And we know one month has 30 days. So the way we can do this is say we're going to multiply by the time, which is one month. But we know one month and seconds don't match that time unit. I want to make sure I convert this month to seconds. So we have to do this. So we know that one month, call it one month is how many days? It's going to be 30 days. And now let's convert the days to seconds. So we know one day is how many seconds? It's going to be 8,600 seconds. So this one's a good one to memorize. We use this a lot, transportation, water. So we use it, especially in the depth section or the second section on the civil FE. So it's a very common conversion. Or you can break it down one day is 24 hours then one hour is going to be 60 minutes, then one minute is 60 seconds. So you can break it down like that. You will still get the same answer. So this is how we break this down. These cancel, cancel, cancel. And note here, the second cancel, and we just get cubic feet for this. 
when we do this. So now the storage at the end of January will equal to that calculation. So let me do this in the calculator. So you take 500 minus 250, then you multiply by one times 30 times eight, six, 400. So when we do that, we get a large number, but note what they want us to find is the value in million cubic feet. So we get approximately, if I look at this, we take this number and divide it by 10 to the power of six. We take this large number divided by a million. So it's going to be about 648 million cubic feet. Or the way you can write this, you can say it's 648 times 10 to the 6 cubic feet. And just note this times 10 to the 6 is going to be the million part. Million. So it's going to be 648 million cubic feet. The storage at the end of January. So now we do the same thing for February. So now we're just going to keep going and go to February. So the storage at the end of February is going to equal to what? We take the storage T minus 1. So the storage T minus 1 is the storage before February where we last left off. What was that? It's the storage at the end of January. So we have to take this, right? This part here has to be the 648. So it's going to be this 648. Let me do times 10 to the 6 for million cubic feet. Then we do plus, so we do plus, and the inflow minus outflow for what month? For January, for February, sorry. It's going to be February where we're focused. So it's going to be the 420 minus 535. So be careful here, the inflow is less. The inflow is less than the outflow, but stay in this manner. So the change of storage is in minus out. So we do 420 minus 535. So for this, it's going to be 420 minus so let me do minus 535 and that's going to be in minus out it's going to be this part and that would be in units of what cubic feet per second i'll put it here and we multiply by the change in time so the change in time for this will not change it's still one month so for february it's 30 days one month and that is actually the same conversion so we multiply by one month and we know that there's 30 days in one month. And for that, we also can say there's eight, six, 400 seconds in one day. So these cancel, the days unit cancel, the seconds cancel. We add cubic feet plus cubic feet. We get the storage at the end of February. So for this, let's do this. So we take the storage in the beginning, which is the storage at the end of January plus the 420 minus 535. Then we multiply by one times 30 times eight, six, 400. So for that one, we get about three, four, nine, nine, two, zero, 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 zero. But I'm gonna take this divided by 10 to the power of six. So doing that, I'm gonna get the million. So it's gonna be about three, 49.92, which is about like 350 million cubic feet. And that would be, you can write it as 349.92 times 10 to the six cubic feet. And note, this is the storage at the end of February. So now we're almost done. The last one is gonna be the storage at the end of March, which is what we want. So the storage at the end of March, what do we do? We go back to that equation above, it says it's going to be the storage March minus one, which is the storage before at the end of February. So that would be that. So it's going to be the 349.92 times 10 to the six cubic feet. Then we do plus the inflow minus outflow for that month, which is March. So it's going to be 525 minus 300. So let's do that. So it's going to be 525 minus 300. And this has units of cubic feet per second. Then we multiply one month because it's just the whole March, one month. And we know there's 30 days in one month and we will convert the days to seconds. So there's eight, six, 400 seconds in one day.
So the days cancel, months cancel, and seconds cancel. We get cubic feet plus cubic feet, and that will give us the storage at the end of March. So doing that, we will say it's going to be the 349. So let me do that 349.92, which is about 350 million cubic feet. Then we take that plus the 525 minus 300 times 1 times 30 times 86400. So doing that, we get about 933. And if we take that divided by 10 to the power of 6, we get, let me see what I get for that. We get about 933. So it's going to be 933.12 million. So it's going to be 933.12 m per million cubic feet so that would be the answer so this is our answer and this gives us the storage at the end of march so it should be in this case c of 933 so now you might be thinking okay i could have done this faster right we could have solved this faster by doing what we could have taken inflow minus outflow got an answer that would be the storage then did it again by doing the inflow minus outflow, got a storage. Then doing that again, 525 minus 300 and got a storage. So the way you can do this, so you can say, okay, 500 minus 250, you get a storage of 250. But that's in CFS. That essentially gives us the storage at the end of January. Because we know we're starting empty. It doesn't make a difference. So we take inflow minus outflow, we get 250, 500 minus 250. Then we take that 250, that's our starting point, plus the change in storage, inflow minus outflow for February. So we do the 420 minus 535, and you get 135. So that would be, think of it as the storage at the end of January in terms of CFS, cubic feet per second. Then we take the 135 and we take that plus the change in storage, inflow minus outflow per March. So it would be 525 minus 300 and we get about 360 CFS, cubic feet per second. That would be at the end of March. So now what do we do to that 360 cubic feet per second? Assuming we're doing it this way. So we will say, let's say Q at the end of March assuming we did it that quick way is about 360 cubic feet per second. So now all you have to do is change this into a volume and by multiplying it by the time. But be careful here, that time period is gonna be still monthly because we're doing this on a monthly basis. So what we will do for this is just take the one month and we know in this case that there is one month, it's 30 days. And doing that, we will also do the one day is going to be 86400 seconds. So these cancel, 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 cancel. And we get the volume. So we take that 360 times 30 times 386400. And we get about the same answer. So we get 933.12 million cubic feet. So this is a quick method. So this is quicker, but I want you to be careful doing it this way. Because in this case, it's convenient. They tell us find the storage at the end of March. But what if they gave you from January until December? Let's say they gave you the entire data. We know that the storage will change. The storage will fluctuate in the reservoir. And what we want to pick out is going to be the maximum storage. In this case, it's convenient because they just tell us find it at the end of March. So we can use that quick method. But if they gave us data from January until December, we actually have to do this on an incremental basis, incremental basis, and find the storage at the end of each month. And the maximum value we get, let's say we get a maximum value for the storage to be at the end of April. If we get that to be at the end of the April, that's what's gonna control. That would be the maximum storage that we need to have for the reservoir 
or the dam that we're sizing. So what's most important is knowing how to use this equation and find the storage on an incremental basis. So we can do it at the end of the day, end of the month, end of an hour, any time period. So this is the recommended method. So let's make sure we know how to do it this way. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.